welcome back to Sprocket. Originally, I had recorded my build of this tank and, you know, my concept for it and everything. And then after I was done recording, I kept modifying it and modifying it, touching it up, doing a little of this, a little of that, and then a little bit more for safe measure. And basically, it barely looks like what it looked like at the end of that recording. So I'm just going to go over the concept and then uh, go over my build verbally with what I had done and then how effective this thing is and how I expect it to be used. So initially my idea was I wanted to make something like the Land Raider in Warhammer 40k. If you don't know what that is, it is a very big, powerful tank, like it's a frontline tank, but it also carries infantry. Now, in real world terms, there's not many vehicles out there like that. The only thing I can think of is the Merkava. Now, the Merkava wasn't designed to carry infantry, but after the the build, after they designed the thing, they realized, hey, you can remove its rear hull racks, uh, its ammo racks, and put infantry in there. And so they used it like that for commandos and, uh, you know, mechanized infantry and even arm, armored ambulances, which is a really great way to use them. So that being said, I thought, all right, how would you use a, a heavy tank that, you know, or even just a tank in general, designed to carry its own mechanized infantry? What role would that take in World War II? Then it made me think of assault tanks, like the assault Shermans or the jumbo Shermans, as they're more commonly known, or even the T-14 uh, tank that was designed to be an assault tank. Uh, the... British Churchill is another good example of like an infantry support assault tank. Heavily armored, meant to take on mostly infantry, but even other tanks at closer ranges. So, with that, I wanted to make a vehicle that was heavily armored um, and armed, and then could also carry its own troops. So, mobility is an afterthought. I, I want armor, I want weapons, and I want to be able to carry troops. And this is what I came up with. Now, initially, I had the um, S or HS, no, HVSS suspension. I couldn't think of the acronym for a minute. Yes, the HVSS suspension, which is what late model Shermans carried, like the EZ-8 Shermans. So it had a bogey in the middle and then two wheels attached. And what would happen is the trench over here, even the little trench, I would try to cross it. And the middle bogey with the two wheels would just go boop, straight down and get stuck in the turret and not want to, or in the, the trench and not want to move. So I decided to switch over to Torsion Bar, which still looks American for sure, but it's just not as American, I guess. And actually, speaking of that idler wheel back there is bothering me. I don't remember changing that. So where's that idler wheel? Let's go. That one. Yeah, I don't know. Ooh, that's not too bad. Yeah, let's go with that one. That looks better. Sorry, that was bugging me. So, yeah, torsion bar system. I, I like it. It still looks right. Uh, like, if you look at it from the side, the hull reminds me of the M10 tank destroyer, uh, just with torsion bar. <laughs> so, the hull design, I wanted to go T14 M10. And so that's why the super sharp angles, even from the side, like, I personally don't think the angled armor on the side is really all that effective for how much room you lose in the interior of the tank. However, for the construct of the build, I think it does look right. Um, it's got that uh, T-34 tank kind of feel about it, you know, Russian T-34, as well as the M10 and the T-14. It was very much common for the time. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I like that one. I think that looks right. And I ended up mounting the engine up front, like on a Merkava, and it's on the right side of the tank. So if you're in the tank, it's the right side. With a fuel tank in front of it, because fuel tanks can be used as armor, the driver is on the opposite side, as well as the turret is offset to the left side of the vehicle. And now, in the terms of the game, you probably could keep it in the middle, but in reality, you've got a big-ass engine right here. It's a 12-cylinder, like, 3-liter engine, I think it said, is what I put it. I'm not sure what that translates to in-game, but it's it's a big engine. And uh, so you 
offset the turret. Uh, to me, that makes sense. And especially, you want as much room in the back as possible. So by offsetting it, you can push the turret forward and have more room in the back. And we also have two extra fuel tanks strapped onto the back in case, you know, they put a hole in the one up front. Uh, now the turret, originally it was flatter, and it was like longer in angle, uh, especially on the, the front and back. And it, my, my friends that I showed this to in a previous design, they said the, the whole vehicle looked like a Merkava mixed with a Martyr, which is a, a German armored personnel carrier, uh, or infantry fighting vehicle, with a Panther turret on top, which is funny because I had... Oh, not you. I had the German mantlet mounted up there instead of the Sherman one. And so I decided to shorten it and make the design as round as possible, like like a Sherman or the T-14. And then put the Sherman mantlet on, and I also had a longer uh, stowage box in the back. I had this one back here, which gave it a very... That, that one's right from a Panzer three or Panzer four. So so is this one, but it's shorter. I think this one's Panzer three and this one's Panzer four. this one here. And this just didn't look right on here. I didn't, I don't know. So I like that one. It gives a nice little overhang because the Sherman had a little bit of an overhang. And then I put these little baskets on the side for extra equipment, more, you know, detail for the vehicle. And overall, the turret turned out pretty well. Now, originally I had skirts on the side, and I removed the skirts to adjust the suspension when I changed it from the, uh, the HVSS suspension. And uh, I haven't put them back on. And honestly, if you're going to be in an urban environment, you probably do want them, but I like it without just for the look of it. But uh, if you want your own head cannon, think of it, hey, it's got the skirts on it still. It's an accessory you can put on there. Maybe it's like a lot of American tanks where we have them, but we're like, no, we're going to take those off. <laughs> uh, I also had extra track bits on the side of this, and I removed those on the side of the turret, and I removed those too because it made it look very German, and it doesn't really add any benefit other than detail in the, in the game. And speaking of the details, I, I really like some of the, the parts you can add, like uh, these plates and... Um, Actually, this one could probably... One of them can move over. I don't know. We'll see. They were a little more straight, but I angled in the outside armor a little bit more. You see we have an exhaust here. I've got uh, Pioneer's tools, repair tools. We've got, um, you know, wires on either side. There's some under here. Uh, extra piping. I think that's a, those are supposed to be barrels. I had to scale it down. Now, I don't even know what this thing is, but I added it for detail. And you see we got a couple of vision ports here. We have uh, lights down here. And a log. You just, you can't have a tank without a log. I know you think usually Russian, you know, Soviet tanks. But American tanks can have logs too, damn it. <laughs> you know, help you get unstuck, get some traction. But uh, I got a couple of loops here and up here. So originally because I had the different mantlet, I mounted those loops kind of like how these are here. And then I changed out the mantlet but I decided to keep them anyway, a little extra detail. And overall, visually speaking, very happy with how the tank turned out. Now, as you see, it's at about 50 tons, so it is a, a heavy monster. So let's see how it handles as a heavy monster. Its overall top speed uh, is about 25 kilometers an hour, which is about 15 miles an hour. It is not a fast boy. Uh, it mounts a 76 millimeter gun. In fact, the same one that I put on my uh, uh, HT ugh, HSTVL. I think that was right. Uh, vehicle I did in my previous episode. Uh, so about an eight second reload. There you go, eight seconds. And as the barely going over 20 kilometers an hour, cross that. We I can't cross the big one. No, uh, the big one I get stuck. And. Um, it doesn't accelerate overly well. It doesn't handle hills very well. But it's not really meant to. And it's one of those things where I haven't changed it because I don't think it should have to change. Just because it's it does what it's supposed to do quite well. So I just want to hit this road real quick instead of the dirt path. It just takes a second to get over here. Let's go ahead and turn. We... I notice we also have the transmission up front. Our sprocket is up front. 
Yeah, there we go. Ever so slowly speeding up. Uh, I think at most it might get to 26 kilometers an hour, maybe. It, like, struggles to push the last, like, two kilometers an hour out of the vehicle. But, I mean, that's fine. It doesn't really need much else. So let's go ahead and take a look real quick at the armor. So lower plate, we have 80 millimeter. Now this plate here is 145 millimeter, and there's a reason for that. So this is actually, it's a different angle, and then it's supposed to be rounded, like on American tanks, uh, or at least close there too, which usually they had a, a strip of thicker armor before they went to their, it's like a two and a half inch plate. But, uh, so I decided 80 millimeter was gonna be on here, much like a Panther. So this one, to kinda go with it, you notice it goes like 192, 93, 94, and then it skips to about 210, 211. So about a 10 millimeter difference of effective thickness. And so that's why this one's a bit thicker overall. Uh, the turret, on the turret face, 101 millimeter, and the mantlet is 89 millimeter. So together it's 151 millimeter, making it quite thick. The sides of the turret, 89 millimeter angled. You got a 25 millimeter plate there. The sides are 75 millimeter and 50 millimeter. And the back is, I, I need to fix this. It's 38 up here, 28 here, 28 there. The roof here is 30 millimeter, and that's 26 millimeter. I, I need to really make it a little more consistent. So that's our armor value at, again, 50 tons. So let's go ahead and we're gonna load in a Panther. Give a good idea of what this thing's capable of. Panther. Hi, Mr. Panther. Let's piss you off. Oh, he just looked at me. Oh, yeah? You can shoot at me, homeboy? Come on. Take a shot. <laughs> All right. Let's... Where are you going? Get back here. Now, I don't want to angle against him because he does have a tendency to kill me when I angle. Oh, is he getting stuck? Yep, he's stuck. Dead panther. Let's try that one more time. I'll just do another quick one. Hey there, buddy. Ding. You take your chances? Yeah, that's what I thought. So whenever I angle, I think he hits the lower plate when I'm angled, and uh, it punches through. You notice he's not doing a whole lot here. Now if he hits my turret ring or my, my lower front plate, I'm done for. Dead Panther. <laughs> so let's go ahead and give this thing a size comparison so you can feel the difference between a Panther and my assault tank. So it's wider, but it's short. Uh, it's actually the same height, but not as long. So that's kind of cool. It's that's a nice comparison. Now it doesn't have the performance that a Panther has, but it definitely uh, it hits. <laughs> so actually, looking at the turret, I kind of still see a Pantherish turret. I don't know. I think mine still looks a little bit more American. So yeah, uh, I ended up naming it the XM33, uh, or T33 really would be prototype designation for the time, but uh, I don't know of a T33, I could be wrong. Uh, a lot of those tanks of the time I'm not as well versed on as I probably should be. Uh, now last thing I want to point out is the decals. So I figured out decals earlier, and then I kid you not, not 15 minutes afterwards, I checked my YouTube page, and somebody had posted how to fix the decals. Now their explanation was spot on. The way you do it in game is bonkers. I don't know. So you place a decal. Let's let's go ahead and do a visual, and I'm gonna shrink it here. So there we go. We we just clicked left click place decal, and left click place decal there. Now that it's on there and we have deselected it we're, or whatever, you right click on it, and you can choose, and then you right click again. There we go. Oh, well, whatever. 
<laughs> it's on there. <laughs> so that's how you you move those. That's how you get them popped on there. So which that helps with the whole American aesthetic here. So that's the video. Um, what do you guys think of this vehicle? What do you guys think of like building instead of real vehicles, building concept vehicles, you know, of my own design. Uh, do you like that idea more? Cause I, I kind of do like the, um, you know, the tank I built previously was pretty fun. I, I also built uh, a couple other real tanks that'll most likely be in a, uh, a video of just a bunch of vehicles, like showcasing them. So I, now that I've done that, I kind of, this was my favorite build so far. Uh, I really enjoyed it taking a concept and seeing if I can put it in the game. I, uh, what did you think? Do you, do you like that idea? Do you, do you like this vehicle? Do you think it's garbage? Should I rebuild it? Should I make it for another, na another nation? Tell me in the comments down below. What are your thoughts? And if you enjoyed, please hit the like button, and I'll see you guys next time.